everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. Anthony Alfredo was at Darlington Raceway for the NASCAR Xfinity Throwback Weekend sporting a Kevin Harvick RCR paint scheme from 2006. Anthony started the race from the 12th position and had moved into the top five before getting caught up in an incident. Let's check in with Anthony for a recap. Well, that's a shame. Throwback weekend really didn't go how we wanted it to at all. We had a great run going there while it lasted on lap uh, lap two there. Uh, the car bottomed out really hard on the splitter, took off, and I got into the outside wall off at two. But fortunately, just cosmetic damage, and the pit crew did an awesome job uh, getting it repaired. And uh, we had no mechanical issues, so we just had to claw our way out of the rear like we're used to because we keep having this bad luck with start position. So. Uh, we were able to pass a bunch of cars. The guys brought me a really great Blue Otter polarized Chevrolet Camaro today. And 21 team did a great job for me all day on pit road. Put us in position there on older tires. Uh, restarted uh, fourth and, uh, well actually we chose to restart fourth, but we were second. Uh, fell in line and fit there on 15 lap older tires, which is a big deal at Darlington. Uh, tires are huge, but slipped in line and I think third, fell back to fifth. And uh, we're looking good there for a little bit. And I was really happy. Honestly, that gamble was kind of sketchy. Uh, but it looked like it was going to work out because the leader went into turn one and spun. Uh, we thought he broke or blew a right rear tire, and I followed him in there, and sure enough, it was rear end grease on the track. So my spotter said, go high, go high, go high, because he was wrecking on the bottom. He had slid down the track, and I went higher and drove right through the rear end grease and wrecked. So it's really frustrating that uh, someone had an issue like that. It's not their fault, but someone had a mechanical failure and spilled rear end grease all the way through turn one and two. And tore up a, a few good race cars, the leaders, and, and mine as well, and we were in a really good position there uh, to take advantage of it and try to have a solid day because we definitely had a top 10 car today, which was probably our goal coming into here. I, I would have been extremely happy with the top five, and I think we were just about in position to do that, especially when we had the track position and the clean air we needed. So uh, just like I said, thankful for everyone at Richard Childress Racing for their hard work and Blue Otter Polarized for coming on board this weekend. It was uh, not the ending we wanted, but we had a strong showing and uh, did all we could. So we're on to the next one. We've got five races left. I'm just really frustrated and uh, without today went and disappointed that the last few races haven't went how we wanted them to because we had such a phenomenal start to the year. We had really great, uh, a great handful of races. And uh, unfortunately our momentum's kind of stalled out. We've just had a lot of bad luck and random things happen and stuff out of our control. So uh, hopefully we can just get back on a roll here because we only got a handful of races left. and. Uh, I'm, I want to do this full time next year. I know if I was even this year, we could be competing for a championship. So uh, we really need to get back to these strong runs and hopefully things will go our way so that we could do that. Um, but nonetheless, very blessed to do what I love for a living. Thankful for everyone who supports me and I hope you all enjoyed the race today. I've been told that hitting rear end grease is just like driving on ice. I'm confident that the number 21 RCR team will get things turned around heading into Bristol Motor Speedway on September 18th. Jesse Love had a full weekend of action in both the midget and the wing sprint car. On night one at Sweet Springs Motorsports Complex, Jesse qualified 13th in the KKM midget, ran fourth in his heat, and finished 17th in the A main. On night two, he qualified 12th, ran fourth in his heat, and 11th in the A main. On to Lake Ozark Speedway in the 360 wing sprint car with Cox Racing, where he finished second in his heat. Then in the qualifier, he got turned into the fence, almost completely destroying the car. However, the team was able to get the car back together in time to make the B main, but the car just wasn't handling well enough to transfer to the A main. He came home in sixth place. Up next for Jesse, back in the dirt this weekend for three nights of racing with KKM. Sam Butler was at Hickory Motor Speedway for the 44th annual Bobby Isaac Memorial in his number 81 Triple R Racing entry. Sam started in the fourth position for the 100 lap feature and quickly started making his move towards the front. Sam battled with both national points leaders Josh Berry and Ryan Millington but was able to park it in victory lane for his first win of 2020. Let's listen in on this victory lane interview. We are live at the Hickory Motor Speedway, where tonight, one of the two biggest races of the year for the Hickory Motor Speedway was run, the Bobby Isaac Memorial Races, and Sam Butler, P-51 
picks up his first ever Hickory Motor Speedway win in the late model division tonight, winning this huge trophy that's basically almost as tall as he is. Uh, Sam, congratulations on a tremendous run. Thanks, man. I mean, I we got next to Ryan Millington around 25 to go, 30 to go, and we stayed for about a good 15, 20 laps. So, I mean, this race was crazy fun. Uh, gosh, can't thank everybody enough. Race Face, FOJ Foundation, PRW Chassis, Triple R Racing. I mean, everybody, my mom and dad for bringing me out here. I just can't thank everybody enough. Your car looked like it was basically on a rail the entire race, and it looked like you were doing a nice job of being patient, but also staying with the leaders. And you and Ryan ran first and second for quite a while. You got alongside them, and then you backed off, and then with about 30 to go, it was almost like you saw the opening, and then all of a sudden, here comes Josh Berry to the outside of you, and now it's like, okay, what do I do? Yeah. And... You know, I, I was I was interested in the fact that at one point I thought, okay, Josh is gone now, but you never gave up, man. You stayed right there and, and got underneath Ryan and ran for about, gosh, it must have been 10 laps at yeah. least side by at side. Um, took the lead inside the 30 to go. And even more surprising, you just drove away. Yeah. No, I mean, this car has been on rails. We barely touched it from yesterday, um, from Friday. We've barely touched this car. This car rolled off the trailer perfect. So, tightened it up a little bit. It ran perfect. So, I mean, we, we came out here, and I saw Josh coming in, and I was like, all right, well, let's see what we can do here. So, he got by me, and he really got on Ryan's door and kind of slid him up the racetrack. So, I went three wide coming out of two. Saw that. <laughs> And uh, finally got it done and kind of stayed side by side with him for 15 laps and then drove away, like you said. It was interesting because for as long as you ran side by side with him, I was kind of hoping you'd stay side by side with him a, a little longer because as long as you two were side by side, Josh Berry could do nothing. But once oh, yeah. you cleared him, Josh got right by him and I said, uh oh, yeah. uh, what's going to happen here? But man, it was like you had a whole other gear the last uh, 15, 20 laps. He didn't even get within half a straightaway. Yeah, it felt like it, man. It was, this car has been crazy good since like two weeks ago. So I just, like I said, can't thank everybody enough and uh, Hickory Motor Speedway for, you know, having this race. So just uh, can't thank everybody enough. Thank you, sponsors. One more time. <laughs> uh, FOJ Foundation, uh, Triple R Racing. Race face and uh, PRW chassis, Tiger rear ends. That's it right now. Sam Butler picks up his first win at Hickory, and it was a big one. The Bobby Isaac Memorial 100 from the birthplace of NASCAR stars, the Hickory Motor Speedway. Thank you. Wow. Nothing like winning the biggest race of the year for your first win. Up next for Sam, back to Hickory Motor Speedway this weekend for Twin 40 Lap Features. Connor Mozak was also at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Bobby Isaac Memorial, where he took the green flag in ninth position and raced his way to a fourth place finish in his number 88 Junior Motorsports Chevrolet. Up next for Connor, Cars Tour at Carteret County Speedway on September 12th. Joey East returned to the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series at Madera Speedway in his number 88 Ag Center. Richwood meet Nate Clower prepared Chevrolet for round six of the MAV TV series. Joey qualified eighth and brought home a sixth place finish in one of the wildest races that I've seen at Madera. Up next for Joey, back to Madera Speedway on September 19th. Joe Valento was at Dells Raceway Park for round six of the Midwest Truck Series in his number 30 Arden Mills Nitro Lubricant Chevrolet. Joe qualified fourth, but had to start sixth with the invert. Joe was running third with 10 laps to go before getting involved in an incident that resulted in sending him to the back of the pack for the restart. From that point on, it was hammer down, and he raced his way back to another top 10 finish in six. Up next for Joe, Midwest Trucks at Marshville Speedway on this Saturday.
Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty this weekend, running both his Dirt Mod and Dirt Late Model. First at Monarch Speedway, where he parked the Red Rocket in Victory Lane once again. Up next, topless late models at RPM Speedway, where he finished fourth in his heat and had to start 15th in the A main, but powered his way to a fifth place finish on a dry, slick, one groove racetrack. That was an A plus performance. Jake Bowman, who has been on a hot streak in his number 71 Nate Clower Jr. late model, turned in his best performance of the year, qualifying in fourth, ran in the top five until getting involved in an incident that sent him to the rear of the field on lap 15. Jake raced his way back to seventh at the halfway break. The young 13-year-old then started to pick off cars one at a time moving into second on lap 52 and stayed there for the next 18 laps, bringing home a second place finish. Up next for Jake, back to Madera Speedway on September the 19th. Cassidy Hines turned in a solid performance at Madera Speedway in round six of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series with another top 10 finish in seventh. Cassidy was running third at the halfway break but she was spun out by another competitor on lap 43 and had to restart at the tail end of the field. But she raced her way back to a seventh place finish. Let's hear Cassidy's take on this with a quick driver recap. Hi everyone, I raced at Madera Speedway this weekend in my 5150 Junior Late Model. I qualified seventh, so that put me in seventh at the start of the main. I had raced my way up to third when another driver had taken me out and sent me to the back. I did end up finishing 7th in that race, but it wasn't quite the finish we were looking for, but it was a pretty good race overall. I definitely hope to go back to Madeira and to have just as good of a race and hopefully even better. Um, I would like to thank all of my sponsors, Sunwest Services, Frontier Restoration, Ducks Unlimited, LL Acousticals, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and of course the Nate Clara Motorsports team. I will be racing my Legend and my Pro Truck at Colorado National Speedway this weekend. This young lady gets better with each race and it would not surprise me to see her in victory lane soon. She has three more shots at it. Up next for Cassidy, Legend Cars and Pro Trucks at Colorado National Speedway this weekend. Brody Moore returned to Madera Speedway with a new car, and it was fast, resulting in his best qualifying effort of the year, posting an 11th place starting position for round six of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Brody moved up to seventh in the first 14 laps, but unfortunately, he got caught up in two separate incidents that retired the team early. Up next for Brody, back to Madera Speedway, September the 19th. Gavin Graham was at Auburndale Speedway for the INEX Double Features where he brought home two top five finishes. In feature number one, he finished fifth, and in feature number two, he brought home a second place finish. Gavin will make his debut in the Kurt Britt Motorsports truck this weekend at Five Flag Speedway coming off of a successful test last week. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite Race Face drivers. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite Race Face drivers. So go out there and have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.